Little Women, Forward. Joe Marsh dreams of doing something splendid. I don't know what, but I'm on the watch for it. The teenage Joe guards her freedom jealously, and we share her eagerness to taste adventure. I hate to think that I've got to grow up and be Miss March and wear long gowns and look as prim as a china aster. It's bad enough to be a girl anyway when I like boys' games and work and manners. Watching Joe grow up, we identify with her struggle and hope that she will find contentment without losing the courage of her passionate nature. She is her mother's chestnut burr, prickly outside but silky soft within. In Little Women, Louisa May Alcott brought irresistibly to life the four March sisters, lovingly rendering their very different characters. Who can forget Beth conquering her fear to tiptoe through the great Lawrence house to reach the promised piano? Or Joe selling her hair to contribute money to aid her father fallen ill on a Civil War battlefield? Or Aunt March unwittingly goading Meg into a declaration of her true feelings towards John Brooke? The individuality of these four heroines and their deep caring for one another has been perfectly portrayed in captivating color illustrations of Jesse Wilcox Smith. With great sensitivity, the artist caught those moments of reverie in which the characters touched an important part of their inner beings. We feel a warm glow of a rich family life when we look at these scenes depicted in soft colors and given definition by a delicate, precise line. The period drawings of Frank T. Marshall further enhance the flavor of family life in the Civil War era. Louisa May Alcott wrote much of Little Women from her life experience. She, like Joe, was the second of four girls and made her bid for financial independence through writing. The character of Amy reflected artistic aspirations of the author's sister, May, and Louisa's sister, Elizabeth, nursed a poor family stricken with scarlet fever, as Beth does in the novel and with the same outcome. Many of the childhood games depicted in this story place first in Louise's childhood. The sisters put on theatrical performances, they formed a Pickwick Club, and instituted a hillside post office. The accepting atmosphere which made possible these enthusiastic games was created by Louise's parents, Abigail, Abba, and Bronson Alcott. Bronson Alcott was a most unusual man for his time a self-taught philosopher, and an educational experimenter. He taught in or founded many schools, which failed because of his radical beliefs and eccentric personality. Tamer echoes of Louise's father can be found in Mr. March, the father of the four girls, a minister by nature as by grace. And in Professor Bear, whom Joe meets when she is a young adult, in describing the latter, Louisa might have been speaking of her father, People seem to gather about him as naturally as about a warm hearth. Poverty was no stranger to the Alcott family. The Louisa's mother was well aware of both the physical and the spiritual necessities in life. Bronson Alcott showed little insight into practical matters and was often bailed out by his friends. When Aunt March says, Mr. and Mrs. March have no more worldly wisdom than two babies, she could have been talking about Louisa's father. It, yet, it was in this loving, un, if unconventional, family that Louisa acquired her abiding beliefs in the virtues of honesty, trust, and caring that suffuse little women. She wrote as she might have written of herself, that Joe felt the blessed solace of a belief in that immortality of love. Little Women celebrates the family's capacity to renew itself. I do think that families are most beautiful things in all the world, cries Joe. Though the four sisters experience disappointment, loss, and sorrow, they are able to deepen their understanding and the acceptance of life, the deep-seated trust with which all members of their family give and receive help. As we read this story, we wonder whether the four March sisters will fulfill their dreams, though Mrs. March says, to be loved and chosen by a good man is the best and sweetest thing which can happen to a woman. Louisa herself never married. After the success of Little Women, she wrote more novels for children, also widely read by adults, and she gradually became the financial mainstay of her impractical family. 
Louisa died on March 6, 1888, at the age of 55, only two days after the death of the beloved father that she strove so hard to protect. Though Bronson Alcott's teachings did influence others, his far greater contribution came in the writings of his gifted daughter. No one reads Little Women just once. Its faith in its sweetness of the simple virtues has become a part of childhood of generations of readers. Ellen S. Shapiro, New York City, 1986. Preface. Go then, my little book, and show to all that entertain and bid thee welcome shall. What thou dost keep close shut up in, in thy breast, and wish what thou dost show them may be blessed. To them for good may make them choose to be pilgrims better by far than thee or me. Tell them of mercy, she is one, who early hath her pilgrim begun. Ye let younger damsels learn of her prize, the world of which to come, and so be wise. For little tripping maids may follow God all along the ways which saintly feet have trod. Adapted from John Bunyan.